Stop right now. Click your phone so you can hear me. A new perspective on gun locks and a gun themed Range Rover, both on this week's TGC News. Have you ever wondered how many things you can attach to your gun with the KDG Connect and side lock mounts? It's a lot. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Kinetic Development Group. Keep it simple, stupid. To get 10% off your entire order, use the code TGC10 at kineticdg.com. Welcome back, my name is John Patton and this week's show is gonna be a short one. Why, you may ask? Because I'm gonna try posting this week's Not A Review segment later in the week and see if you guys like that by itself. And seriously, if you're within a six hour drive of Monroton, PA, I expect to see you at the Stone Mountain Machine Gun Shoot on April 30th and May 1st. The link to pre-register is down in the description of this video. Now, this week's first story is about the race to create the perfect gun lock. Over the last few years, we've seen so many designs from smart locks to locks with keys to biometric. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But even after all of that, I've yet to see one that has what every single gun owner needs, speed. There are even some that say they're fast, but then require you to chamber around after dropping the lock because they go through the trigger guard. It's been a freaking mess overall, but this new one from a company called Zor has me questioning my thought process. The MSRP is also $200, so they can absolutely pound sand, but the concept is very simple. You stick the bullet-shaped piece into the chamber of your gun and then press the button to lock it. It also connects via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi with an adapter to an app on your phone to tell you if someone is trying to tamper with or move your gun. I think that's pretty slick. To unlock it, you turn the dial to enter your code and then rack the gun to release the lock. So if you kept a loaded magazine in the gun, this would actually chamber around. It's not a bad idea actually, but still turning that knob to unlock the thing isn't fast. And this is where I start to question myself, question where I'm coming from with these beliefs. Maybe these locks, whether they care to admit it or not, are not for primary defense guns. Maybe they're just a great way to lock up your other firearms. I mean, seriously, is there anything faster than a well-hidden gun that's not locked up at all when seconds count? From what I gather, the main idea with a gun lock is to keep others from operating said gun, like kids or your friendly neighborhood home invader. But I seriously cannot think of anything that I would call fast that would also completely secure the gun. But at the same time, the thought crosses my mind. Are we on the cusp of gun lock technology actually being usable? The gun industry is easily five to 10 years behind the rest of the world on a regular basis. So what makes this different? That being said though, are these gun lock companies barking up a tree that doesn't grow any money? Or do you think that this technology actually has a place in the gun world. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comment section. And in what are you, poor news? Range Rover has partnered with the elite firearm craftsman Holland & Holland to bring you a nearly quarter million dollar SUV that you didn't know you actually needed. For those of you that don't spend your days drooling over things you will literally never have, Holland & Holland is a firearm manufacturer for people that spend their time jet-setting around the world on private airliners while sipping only the oldest liquor from the gold-plated skull of a monkey they killed while on safari. AKA, <laughs> they make the finest guns I've ever seen. The craftsmanship is incredible. The attention to detail on every single step of their process is unreal and the six digit price actually reflects that. Now they've come together with Range Rover to produce a giant middle finger to poor people. They've taken the boring $200,000 Range Rover SV autobiography, which features only the finest wood and leather, 
and a 550 horsepower engine, as well as the rear reclining seats and all kinds of other ridiculous features that really don't show up in normal cars. And to turn it up a notch, now all of the interior metalwork with this new version has the same engraving as the shotguns and even comes with a deployable case for two ridiculously expensive Holland & Holland guns. I would honestly expect nothing less from these two companies. Screw it. I'm trading in my battle wagon tomorrow and getting my own version of this. I gotta have it. What? What? Oh. Apparently there's only gonna be 30 ever made. Well, fine. I guess I'll just make my own. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll see you after the break for this week's friendly fire question. The blasting cap from RE Factor Tactical is built on a FlexFit mesh platform to offer a form-fitting cap that keeps the operator cool during intense activity. Featuring not one, not two, but three patch panels, you can morale the f out of your head. And they're finally available again in Woodland Camo. To get 10% off your entire order, click the link in the description to check out refactortactical.com and use the code TGC10. This week's friendly fire question is from Vraxis or VRAxes or Vraxes on Snapchat, and he asks, what are your thoughts on holsters? I hear terms like OWB, AI, WB, different clip styles, materials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do you like? That's a great question. I'll share some of my thoughts on holsters. They're everywhere. There are so many different kinds and styles that it's tough to determine what to really get. The first thing I'll say is that there is not one single best holster out there. It doesn't exist. They're all situationally dependent. Some are great for concealment, but not so great for training and repeated holstering, whereas others are great for things like competition and not really great for concealing. And some are just for style points. I personally prefer to carry at about the three to four o'clock position with a good inside the waistband or IWB holster, but I don't really mind an outside the waistband holster either. You also, in that regard, have to be aware of local and state laws on open carry when you rock an outside the waistband holster every day. I mean, here in Pennsylvania, it's legal for me to open carry, so it doesn't matter if I carry outside the waistband and the gun shows. Now, in the vein of holsters, I'm actually gonna have a holster not a review segment coming up in a few weeks that's supposed to be pretty good, so keep an eye out for that. I think one of the biggest and most unfortunate thing about holsters is that the best way to find what you like is to try as many as possible, and they're not always cheap but that is the real way to find what works for you. Don't settle on something just because you heard it's cool. Find what works for you. My friendly fire question to you guys this week, what is the most important lesson you've learned since you started shooting? I think this will be real interesting. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, you can post that on facebook.com slash the gun collective, send it to me on Snapchat or post it on Instagram and be sure to tag the gun collective. And that is it for this week's short show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you didn't because it was too short or you thought it was stupid or whatever, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.